Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm Daniela and I'm here with my colleagues Greg and Marcos. We are from Itaú Bank and today we bring a topic about OKR methodologies. Uh, so now I'm inviting Greg and Marcos to talk to talk about themselves and to do this for you. Perfect. Uh, good morning and afternoon, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, my name is Gregory. You can call me Greg. I am a PM in Itaú uh, Bank. So um, my community here, it's a zero outage. It's a, so appropriate to, to the topic. And um, I will pass my word to Marcos continue here. OK, let's start. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. I am Marcos. I work for Itaú also. I work at a community that's called Telecom and uh, I'm a zero outage analyst. So today we want to share with you a little bit about zero outage and the OKR methodology, how we can use them both to achieve a better quality for our IT environment. So it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for, for your time. So let's start. So first of all, I want to walk you through a usual journey that a company can take to use the OKRs method. And after that, we will explain a little bit about the OKRs and how they work. But a lot of companies are used to work by the waterfall model. And uh, what is this model of working? It's very known. So it's a linear approach of working. Uh, the whole structure of the company is focused on this method. And uh, on the waterfall model, we have a segmented structure, for example. So we are really focused on our projects. So for example, there are the departments, there are the management, there are the superintendences, and each team works separately and each team has their goals, has their projects to achieve, to conclude. And uh, we have a lot of projects happening. We have the, uh, the paper of the um, project management that will make everything works. And uh, one big thing about the waterfall model is the goal setting. That's where the OKRs are working and the OKRs touches is that a big, a big characteristic of this model is the goals that are set for the whole year. So how's the this works? In the beginning of the year, the board of directors, for example, has some goals that they need to achieve by the end of the year. So they start the year in January, they take a meeting and they are trying to understand what's happening on the environment. They're trying to understand where they wanna get. So they set up some goals and those goals have to be pursued for the whole year. So we have the goal, for example, I want to get uh, 100 more clients to our company by the end of the year. So each team, each department will have these projects and uh, they will work on those projects. They will work on those uh, programs and actions they will make to achieve that goal. So the project management is very important because he needs to make the projects finish it and conclude it with successful. So we are focused on the projects through the year, each month, each quarter, and uh, we stop a little bit to look to the goals and we start to look into the projects to guarantee that they all are concluded. So the year are going. So in the end of the year, the board of directors will look again to the number, look again to that goal that they set and they will see what happened. So the, the manager will say, okay, all the projects that we needed to conclude, we conclude, but let's see what happens with, with our goal. So two things can happen, one really good and one thing that is not so good. The good thing that can happen is when we get to the end of the year, we look to that goal and we see that it was too easy. So in, the, in this example, we wanted to achieve 100 more new clients, but we saw that it was easy and we could achieve 1,000 clients. So more than we think that, that we thought that was possible. So it's really good that everyone applauds, everyone is happy because we could achieve our target. We had 10 times our targets, our goal. So the projects were concluded, everyone's happy. But the second thing that can happen, and sometimes it happens, that the, the goal was too aggressive or too hard for the teams to conclude or to pursue. So in this scenario, 
the people will see that, okay, we wanted to achieve 100 more new clients, but we only could achieve 10 more new clients. What do we do now? It's the end of the year. It's December. We don't have enough time. We only have the next year to resolve that. So we will tr we think about a new strategy. We'll think about a new goal for the next year. For this year, we don't have enough time. So uh, the world is changing very fast. The things is changing very fast. And uh, in the past few years, a lot of companies, specifically about the IT environment in the IT business, started to migrate from the waterfall model to the agile model. So there's a lot of frameworks such as Lean, such as Scrum, such as Kanban, but a lot of companies started to work in a different way, evolving to agile. So in the agile model, we are trying to do different. So instead of department and people working separately, we have communities where everyone needs to collaborate. So we have squads and uh, in a squad, we have people from a lot of skills, a lot of backgrounds working together. So we don't have more department and management and superintendencies. We have communities and squads and release trains. So the agile model is very collaborative and it needs to be everyone working together. Another big thing about the agile model of working is the constant deliveries. So we don't have more one big project to pursue or oh, we make a project then we go to other and the important is the uh, the end of the year so we have constant deliveries so we pay, we take a big problem a big project for example and we break into minor parts so we have the sprints for example so every two weeks or every three weeks we'll have a tiny delivery and we'll see if that deliver is on the right path so a big difference here is that in the waterfall model, what, what matters is by the end of the year, I have to achieve that 100 clients, for example. In the agile model, we won't look to the 100. Maybe we can break it in by quarters, by sprints. Uh, for example, the first quarter, 25, the second quarter, 25. So we have constant deliveries so we can get by the end of the year on that big goal, on that big number. So this method needs a flexible way of putting up our goals, of setting up our goals. We need to stop following the projects and we start to following outcomes. So now what matters is the time parts, the content deliverance and not the big part. So in order for model, by the end of the year, if I achieve that, that's okay. Sometimes in the middle of the year, by June, that number was achieved. So we need to be flexible to change that if we need, or sometimes something happens in our environment, in our company that changes our direction, that changes our path. So here comes the OKRs. The OKRs can work really well with agile models because a new methodology, there are the agile frameworks, the, the Scrum, the Lean, et cetera, they requires a new measuring way. So the OKRs is the opportunity to the companies to keep continuous improvement in their operations, in their job, in their daily life. And the uh, OKRs are simpler, are more flexible, are more agile. So I want to explain a little bit, um, a little bit more about the OKRs, how they work and how we can use this, this methodology that is really great and really it's connected to our everyday, to our nowadays because the world is changing very fast, the operations are changing very fast, so we need to be able to change our goals also very fast. So what is an OKR? OKR was created at Intel, the company Intel, and after that, John Doerr, that was working at Intel, brought it to Google, and nowadays Google, Amazon, Twitter, and a lot of companies use this OKR. And John Doerr writes a book that's called Measure What Matters. So he has this book, he has a website to talk about this methodology. It's available on Amazon.com. But he brings to us the definition of OKRs. And I want to share with you the quote that says, OKRs are a collaborative goal setting protocol for companies, teams, and individuals. So first of all, OKRs are collaborative. So as I said, the agile methodology is really focused on collaboration, right? So it's focused on communities. Here on, on the bank, for example, we have communities. I work in the telecom community. So it's not a department. We are working together. So OKRs 
helps with that because everyone on the company will look to the OKRs, we know the OKRs and know where the company wants to get. But also OKRs, and here's the key to understand the OKRs. OKRs are a goal setting protocol. So it's all about the goal setting, how we are setting up our goals, how we are following our goals, how we are uh, looking to the numbers and see if we are going on the right path. So we brought to you four characteristics about the OKRs that helps a company to work with the, with this method and uh, working with the Agile. So every everything here works well with the Agile framework. So the first thing on the OKRs that are really interesting is that on the OKRs, we are open to have constant reviews. So what is that? For example, at Scrum or other framework, we have the release plannings and the release. So we have quarter periods of time. So every three months, we will look to our operation, look to our backlog, look to our deliveries and review everything that we did, everything that we are doing, everything that we want to do. So the Agile Frameworks has these uh, ceremonies and uh, in the OKR, we have uh, this opportunity to use these ceremonies to review our goal setting. So we had, for example, the example that I was talking about later after, uh, we wanted to achieve 100 more clients. So why not? On the first quarter, we want to achieve 25. So we won't wait to the end of the year to see, okay, it was too hard. We will look by the end of March, for example, beginning of April, that 25 for the first quarter was good enough. So we can continue on this pace. But sometimes that 25 was too hard. So we have time to change our strategy, change our projects, changing the way that we are working, maybe hire some more new people so we can adjust our strategy, adjust our path to we can achieve that number by the end of the year. So we have these constant reviews that helps a lot. And it can be by quarter, it can be by month. It depends on how the company uh, is working. The second thing about OKRs uh, is that OKRs are really challenger. So I put a quote here that says, aim for the moon. If you miss, you may hit a star. So that's a concept in the OKRs that it's called moonshot. So when you are writing uh, a goal on the OKR method, you always try harder than you think that it's possible. Obviously, we can uh, aim for the impossible because it would be the opposite. It would be very bad for the team. We will be dismotivated. But we, if we know that we can achieve for sure that 100 clients, why not try 120? Why not try harder? Because in this way, we, we can challenge our teams to try harder, to try better, to try smarter. So in that way, sometimes uh, we think that it's impossible. We think that it's really, really hard, really tough to achieve that number, but that's our goal and we will try harder and we will try smarter. And maybe when we look to that, we can get more further, more far than we thought that was possible. So uh, the moonshot is about that. We always try harder, not impossible, I repeat. But every time I, I try to push my team to try, to try harder, to think outside of the box. So it helps us to aim for the moon. And if you miss, you may hit a star. So sometimes we can achieve that number. It was too hard, but we can get closer to that number. Uh, so it helps a lot because we are always pushing ourselves harder and harder. The third characteristic is that in the OPRs, we always came from the baseline. So every key result, and we'll talk about that later, but every key result is written in that way. Go from X to Y. So we are always looking back to X, so what we already did, and looking forward to Y. So where do we want to get? So in this method, everyone that looks for the OKRs knows what is happening on the company, knows where we are coming from, where we are going forward. So it's very visual actually to, to look and we never lose our sight to where we came from. So it helps us to see, okay, we already achieved all of that project. We already achieved all that number so we can do better. We can aim for the moon. 
And the first thing is that we focus on the outcome. So as I said, in the water, waterfall model, sometimes we are really focused on the project. So we are pursuing our projects. We have uh, settings and we have uh, applications to follow the projects to see if, if a, every action that we need to take on the project is being made, if we are uh, we can achieve our deadline in pursuing the projects, but look, in the OKR, we are pursuing the outcomes. We want the outcomes to be actually uh, get by the end of the year, by the end of the, the period of time, for example, a quarter. So the focus is on the outcomes and don't pursuing projects. Uh, John Doerr also has another quote that I brought here that says that OKRs can operate as a guiding a guide to the top of the mountain. So the analogy is if we are climbing a mountain, we have to, eat time by time, review what we are doing to see if we are going on the, on the right path. We need to try to ch uh, challenge ourselves. So for example, to climb the Mount Everest is really hard. So it's challenging for itself. We always came from the baseline and we look what we did yesterday and what we want to do tomorrow. We you always focus on the higher, on the, the top of the mountain. So they are a guide so we can, as a company, achieve the top of the mountains, the top of the business, and be better in our daily job. So let's be practical now. How to create an OKR? So OKR is an acronym to Objective Key Result. And uh, this method has three parts, and I will explain to you now these three parts, and then we're going to share with you some examples, some uh, fictional examples uh, about how we can use in different areas, in different environments. So the first thing about the OKR is the O from the acronym, that is the objective. So the objective is the what. What do I want? Where do I want to get? This needs to be aspirational. So I won't put an objective that says I want to achieve 100 more new clients. It needs to be aspirational to inspire our team to work. So, for example, be the largest bank, be the largest company in my, in my business. So be better uh, to have the better company team. So needs to be aspirational and uh, needs to be focused. So, for example, if we have a community that has 60 members on the community, 50, 60 members, we will only have four or three objectives because the objectives needs to be the main focus for the to the company for that period of time. So we can have, for example, 10 or 20 objectives because we will lose our focus. So we need to be focused on three or four and then the KRs and the actions because the idea is that all the team all the people on the company are working on the same way, on the same path, the same direction. So the objective is that, what I want. But how I get to that objective? And that's the how, that's the key R's, key results. So each key results are the numbers that we are going to pursue month by month, uh, quarter by quarter. So the key results needs to be measurable, needs to be a number. It has to be a number because that's the thing that we can measure time by time and we can see if we are moving forward or not. And uh, the key results, the theory says that we can have from three to five key results. So it can be a lot, because it's about focus, right? As I said, but it can be one or two because it's not too much. So three to five, it's okay. And each key result will generate their actions. So here are the projects. So the key result one will have the action two, the action one. And each action can be a project, can be a program, can be an action that the company will take. Deliverable. So, sorry? A deliverable. A deliverable, right? Yeah, thank you, Greg. A deliverable. So each action will, here will be connected to a KR, and uh, we will explain a little bit better with an example of how it works. So let's imagine that we are a company that has a social networking app. So for example, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever. So we work for the company, and we have an objective and some key results and some actions. So first, the what, the objective, needs to be inspirational, aspirational, as I said. So 
delight customers of a social networking app. So we just don't want to have more clients or, or for example, have more sales. We want to delight our customers and that they can have a greater experience in our app, for example. So that's the what, that's the our big goal for the quarter, for example, and now the how. Here we have three key results to explain how we can write this, these KRs and how we can do that. So if you look to the key results, the three of them will start with the word increase. So in the KR, we always start with increase or reduce or keep under, keep above. So we always about the number. So in this example, increase the average active user retention rate from 45 to 60. So we want to increase, what we want to increase? The average active user retention rate from 45 to 60. So always came from baseline. We were on 45, we want to achieve 60. When? Until July, 2023. So you always have this structure, increase or reduce or keep it under, for example, the number that we're going to measure, where we're coming from, from 35, and where we want to achieve 60. And always we, ha we need to have the period of time. Another example, we want to increase the average number of likes per post, for example, by 20% compared to the previous month. So here, here we have July, 2023, so three months forward, but here we're comp comparing month to month. That's okay. We're always comparing period of time. And uh, the third example says that we want to increase the net promoter score, the you no know, NPS from X to Y until July 2023. So we have these three key results. And uh, here we're talking about our goals, about our big picture, right? So here are the actions. We can address each action to a team. So for example, to increase the user retention rate, we can, for example, offer some kind of reward for using the app. And maybe this thing here can be addressed to the uh, product people, to the product team. Also, we want to improve monetization experience for users. So maybe this action can be addressed to the UX team. We want to improve our recommendation algorithm. So for the algorithm, maybe the IT team can, can take care. So each action, a different team can, can take care and also then do their, their projects, they delivers, and everyone's working for the same objective. So uh, on the ceremonies, on the meetings, we will look to the numbers, see if the number is changing and uh, because of the actions. So we have these three parts. So here's a practic practical example of how it can work. And uh, the important thing is, if we achieve the key results, we achieve the objectives. So if we increase the number from 45 to 60, if we increase the average number likes of per post by 20% and we increase the NPS, we will delight customers of a social networking app. So all of them are connected with the teams, with the squads and communities to work together for the big picture, so for our big objective. And now Greg will continue with you with another example here talking about zero outage. It's Greg? it's it's muted, Greg. Oh, so sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marcos. Um, congrats for your presentation. It was very clear. And in addition, on here, I will to the next example. Uh, the last example was about uh, a social media, and here I will bring uh, to our reality about zero voltage. So it's so appropriate to this forum, uh, to the ZOIS, right? So uh, our uh, process pillar, it's about that. So here, like I will emphasize uh, in each time uh, the instruction of uh, QRs in my example. So the first part, will be the objective, so need to be inspiring. So my objective here is achieve zero outage. Uh, we know the, the zero outage in, uh, if you think about the number, it's, uh, it's impossible, right? You never will be exactly zero outage, zero impact. 
but here not it's about the number like uh, we uh, emphasized it before uh, in the objective it's uh, our goal where uh, we uh, have to uh, arrive so here uh, this zero it's about the concept so concept of zero outage so we achieve in the top top of Mon mountain and uh, we have to make our plans our key results and our actions to uh, achieve this objective so I will bring a uh, context to to our uh, key results here. So we are thinking about uh, a zero outage area in your company adapted to your reality. So you have many metrics to measure because your key results have to be measurable, right? So here you have, for example, uh, the per, uh, the quantity or percentage of impact customers and you have the number of incidents and um, the second uh, important ma metric to to measure and the number three uh, the uh, automatized key b uh, key bees here key its knowledge and b its base it's like a, a instruction operational uh, instruction so your uh, oper it operation receive uh, a an operation instruction and we we'll, uh, apply that I uh, will give some examples when I enter in this point point. and the last one uh, the number of chant uh, that caused an, an, in, an incident so in the first one uh, the RQ result so I will emphasize uh, the instruction uh, starting with reduce or uh, can be uh, increase in some case so here you have to impact your numbers in a positive way so when you are saying about uh, impact customers uh, reduce that will impact your number in a positive way so reduce the percentage of impact customers from so here it's the baseline so needs to be measurable from five percent to one percent so here you are improving your numbers and bring a, a better experience to your clients so uh, and you have uh, so uh, must have an uh, end date a uh, target so here uh, until july 2023 uh, how you will do that so with some actions are deliverable so here in this case you can create for example some redundancy on the equipment more criticals or links more criticals and uh, using this strategy you can uh, uh, protect the experience of your customers because if you one link is out you change to the other to the backup so you, your uh, impact customers will be reduced in this case other action uh, just to materialize the actions or deliverable examples we can create in AWS in a cloud or in depend of your uh, provider you can create a uh, other zone of availability to for the critical system so here uh, we've uh, finished the first key uh, to achieve our objective the second one it's about number of incidents so for example in the last uh, in the last quarter or in the last release in the last three months you had uh, 100 of incidents and you have to and you desire reduce that so we can uh, form our QR like that uh, reduce the number of incidents from 100 to 50 one two july 23 so uh here you are measured to and you have the target to conclude that the actions can be abc curve so you can create your abc curve and identify uh what what incidents bring more uh, quantity or amount of incidents and you you whacked uh the main root causes so the next uh, the next step will be create uh, stru structural actions for the main root cause so you will uh impact your numbers uh, with a positive way doing that 
So the next one, the key, key are number three, it's about automatize uh, key bees. So like I said, uh, key, key, key it's about knowledge and B about basis to uh, um, me, uh, define that can be our operational uh, instruction. So for example, uh, you have uh, some problem um, in your server, uh, achieve uh, 100 of uh, memory, for example, and there you have a structure operation to your IT operation. Oh, uh, remove this server uh, uh, of your environment to don't impact uh, your numbers. This is a manual activity. So you can automatize that. And our care, it's about, about it. So increase in 50% the amount of automatized key bees one to July 2023. The actions, you can map in uh, no automated key bees. And so uh, how I know how key bees uh, no automatize it yet, I can invest on Python training to form new employees with this knowledge. And now I can automate the KBs and uh, I can uh, protect the, the time uh, of uh, my employee to do other activities. And this activity will, uh, uh, will be uh, automatic. And the last one, the last key are, it's about uh, changes uh, that caused an, uh, an incident. So starting with reduce the number of chance that caused an incident from 10, for example, to 5, 1 to July 2023. So here the actions can be, you can create a technical board to analyze critical changes. So here you can bring your best employees, your specialists to analyze uh, the changes, the main changes, the more critical changes and give your feedbacks, your insights to bring uh, more, um, um, more, um, how can I say that? Um, more confidence mm -hmm. to, to your activity. So, and the last one, you can determine less critical periods and days to implement the changes. So for example, uh, in the Friday evening, it's so common. Uh, so a lot of families uh, go out to restaurants and uh, friends go out to bars, for example. So if you have outage in your app in this time can be a problem because a lot of people uh, in a bank app in this case, we are using that. So you can choose other time, a period of time uh, without a lot of people using, without a lot of demand, okay? So this was uh, our example about uh, zero outage reality. And uh, with this key result and these deliverables, we can achieve our uh, objective, zero outage, uh, like we said. And in the next slide, I will apply a new example to the reality of Zoys. So the zero outage industry standard, uh, our forum, with data with some member of this, this forum, and I will bring uh, 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 example applied to this reality. So our objective here, it's so inspiring and it, it's the, the point, make Zoys the most used methodology in entire world. So um, this is our objective here and how uh, we will do that, we can uh, increase uh, the number of people certified, for example, from X to Y, went to July 2023. So recently, uh, we uh, was we were discussion about create. Uh, we have in the Zoys uh, three le levels of uh, certifications, and you can achieve that by participation. And we are are creating uh, the new one to like you have AWS certification, for example, we will have now the Zoy certification. So we can uh, internalize in your uh, company, oh, we have the new certification about zero outage and you can achieve a lot of people there because uh, sometimes uh, some people can't participate in active active in, in, your, the, in the forum, but these people can know the forum because uh, we'll uh, apply to this exam, to this certification. So here, creating the foundation level of, of certification, we can achieve more people and you can become the ZOIS methodology, the more used in the entire world. The second one, 
you can increase the number of members, not just uh, people do the exam, but a member and uh, on the ZOIS from, for example, you have a 50 participants and, and you have to, uh, you'd like uh, a TIV, for example, uh, 100. So you can disseminate ZOIS and all partner companies. So we have a partner with a lot of other companies. We can uh, promotion the ZOIS there and bring more and more members to participate here. So this is the action to uh, help this number in a positive way. And the last one, uh, to achieve our objective, uh, the most used methodology in the entire world, you can count uh, how many countries uh, the ZOIS uh, are using now, today, nowadays. So we can uh, count that and increase the country's amount with ZOIS members from, for example, 10 countries to uh, 50 countries uh, once December, because it's more complexity, this uh, key result. So like Marcos already said before, we can uh, create a, a key result uh, with a um, period of time bigger, and you will measure that in uh, constant, uh, each month, each sprint, or if uh, um, it uh, uh, release. So the action can be promoted, for example, in the next week, we will have an event of Zeiss in Germany, and you can uh, create and, uh, uh, pr pr these events in the next years, promote annual events in different countries, open to the public, and bring a lot of people of different countries to the Zeiss. So here it's just to illustrate and demonstrate uh, to uh, the reality of Zeiss uh, one OKR, okay? And to conclude, guys, this uh, was our presentation. It was a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, presence here. Uh, this is uh, uh, the book, uh, Inspiration Us to bring this presentation, was uh, the author, uh, John Doerr. And in the middle of the slides, I have a site, uh, webmatters.com. And in the uh, right side, have the TED Talk about the topic in the YouTube. And the, you can access that if you uh, have uh, you interested in, in, in this topic. And we are open now to, to any questions. And it was a pleasure to be here. I, I, I say thank you and name my name, Denny, and Marco's name too. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.